This is Imaging of Adrenal Hemorrhage. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. So this will be a part one lecture of Leave Alone Adrenal Masses. I'll be focusing on adrenal hemorrhage, mainly the CT, MRI, and ultrasound appearance. And then I'll also talk about causes of adrenal hemorrhage. Next time, we'll talk about other leave alone masses, adrenal cyst, and myelolipoma. And by leave alone, I mean masses that are benign and need no additional intervention. All right, let's start with the case. This was a 33-year-old male who came to the emergency department with left flank pain. So because of that left flank pain, there was concern for an obstructing renal stone, so a non-contrast stone search was performed. There was no renal stone, but there was another cause for the patient's pain, this heterogeneously hyperdense mass superior to the left kidney. Looking at the axial images, you can see the mass there with some periadrenal fat stranding denoted by the green arrow. That's due to fluid and hazy infiltration of the surrounding fat. If we measure the density of this mass by placing our region of interest down, we get a density of 50 Hansfeld units. Remember, the Hansfeld unit is the unit of density we use to calculate uh, density on CT. And if you've seen the adrenal adenoma lecture, you know that this is not consistent with a lipid-rich adenoma. Adenomas have a density of 10 Hounsfeld units or less when they're lipid-rich. So this is characteristic of adrenal hemorrhage. So in CT, hemorrhage will typically be a round or oval hyperdense adrenal mass with a density of 50 to 90 Hounsfeld units. That's the density of blood. And they'll be surrounding stranding due to inflammation in the fat and fluid. An adrenal hemorrhage should not enhance, which is defined as a change in pre- and post-contrast imaging of less than 10 Hounsfeld units. And that means that the density of this mass, which is 50 Hounsfeld units on this non-contrast CT, would not increase to more than 59 Hounsfeld units if we gave intravenous contrast, because it's just a hemorrhagic mass. This is not an underlying tumor. And in that case, no additional workup or follow-up imaging is needed. And that's based on the current American College of Radiology Incidental Findings Committee recommendations for management of incidental adrenal masses. Now let's take a look at the MRI for this patient. This is an axial T2-weighted image. You can tell it's T2-weighted because the fluid is bright, the CSF in the spinal canal, and you can remember that H2O has a 2 in it, just like T2, so that will be bright. And then there's this left adrenal mass here. You can see it has a peripheral hypo-intense rim, and it's centrally bright. And you may say, well, the central brightness is similar to the surrounding fat. Could this just be a fatty lesion? Well, if we do a fat-suppressed T2-weighted image, you can see that the subcutaneous fat signal is canceled out, but this mass remains very bright. It actually looks brighter than on the non-fat-suppressed image, and that is because whenever you add fat suppression, you narrow the dynamic signal range, and anything that's intrinsically bright will become brighter. So this is clearly not fat. We can also look at the in and out of phase T1 weighted imaging. Remember, this is chemical shift imaging. And there's that left adrenal mass again. It's not dropping out on the opposed phase series, meaning it's not uh, becoming dark. And again, you can tell it's the opposed phase image because it has India ink artifact, etching artifact around all the structures. So you know that this is, again, not a lipid-rich adrenal adenoma. And if we add fat suppression to that T1 weighted image, this little bright rim surrounding the mass becomes even brighter. Again, because we're narrowing the dynamic signal range. And this is a very classic appearance for adrenal hemorrhage on MRI. So MRI is actually the most sensitive and specific modality for diagnosing adrenal hemorrhage. And this specific MRI imaging finding is this high signal intensity rim sign, which is due to the presence of methemoglobin, which is a form of hemoglobin we tend to see in the setting of a subacute hematoma. And if we gave contrast, just like on CT scan, there would be no enhancement. Let me just talk a minute about adrenal hemorrhage on MRI. So it will have a variable appearance depending on the age of the hemorrhage. With acute hemorrhage, which is defined as less than seven days, you have predominantly deoxyhemoglobin. And the mass will be T1 isointense to slightly hypointense and T2 markedly hypointense. So it'll be fairly dark on both sequences. When you have subacute hemorrhage, which is defined as seven days to seven weeks, you have predominantly methemoglobin, and the hemorrhagic mass will be markedly hyperintense on both T1 and T2 weighted images. And that's what we have in this case. With chronic hemorrhage, which is defined as more than seven weeks, you have mostly hemosiderin, which is dark on T1 and T2 weighted images. Now, in real life, you often don't have this perfect signal characteristics of an adrenal hemorrhage. There's usually varying phases of hemorrhage, especially if there's ongoing bleeding or rebleeding, so you might get a mix of different signal intensities. So 
let's look at another case. This was a patient who came with acute right upper quadrant pain. And you can see that this CT scan shows a well-circumscribed, ovoid, heterogeneously hyperdense right adrenal mass. If we look at the MRI for this patient, you can see that there is a heterogeneously T2 hyperintense and hypointense right adrenal mass. Again, the upper image is without fat suppression, and the lower image has fat suppression. You can see that there are also some trace pleural effusions. Looking at the T1 in phase opposed phase chemical shift imaging series, this mass demonstrates no signal dropout, again, not consistent with a lipid rich adrenal adenoma. If we look at the T1 fat suppressed image, you can see that there is a faintly hyperintense rim on T1 images. And given the T2 signal, this is consistent with acute to subacute adrenal hemorrhage, which goes along with the patient's symptoms of fairly acute presentation. So the T1 heterogeneous isointense appearance with a faint hyperintense rim and then the heterogeneous mixed signal. The darker the T2, the more acute the hemorrhage is. Now, what's usually the course for adrenal hemorrhage? Well, this is that same patient back to the CT scan showing the right adrenal mass. This patient had a follow-up MRI six months later, and you can see that the right adrenal gland posterior to the inferior vena cava there looks totally normal now. So in most cases, adrenal hemorrhage will resolve completely. It may leave behind adrenal calcifications or a pseudocyst, which I'll talk about in a later lecture. Now, what about ultrasound for adrenal hemorrhage? Well, this patient actually did have a right upper quadrant ultrasound prior to getting the CT scan. And you can see that there's a six centimeter ovoid, well-circumscribed, solid appearing mass there in the region of the right adrenal gland. And on the lower image, which shows color Doppler, there is no flow within the lesion. So that means it's avascular. So adrenal hemorrhage on ultrasound, usually we don't see the adrenal glands very well in ultrasound if they're normal. But with hemorrhage, the appearance is variable. It depends on the age of the hemorrhage. So it could be hypoechoic or hyperechoic, meaning dark or bright. It could be solid or cystic. And hemorrhage will become anechoic and cystic as the hematoma liquefies. Anechoic means completely black, like fluid. So here's a different case. This was a two-week-old patient. And the bilateral adrenal glands were imaged on ultrasound. In the right adrenal gland, you can see that there's a mass that's both solid and has anechoic cystic components, whereas the left adrenal mass is homogeneously echogenic and solid. If we add power Doppler imaging to that right adrenal mass, power Doppler also detects flow like color Doppler, but it's more sensitive. You can see that there's no flow within the right adrenal mass. We do see some normal flow within the adjacent right liver. This patient had follow-up ultrasounds and the hemorrhage resolved two months later which is the expected course. Now here's a Cindy clip from that same patient, nicely showing in real time the mixed cystic and solid components of that right adrenal hemorrhage. You can see that the anechoic black areas correspond to the hemorrhage components that are liquefying. Now here's another case. This is a patient who had an isolated right adrenal hemorrhage. You can see that there is a mixed solid and anechoic cystic mass in the right adrenal gland region. And there is significant mass effect against the adjacent right kidney on the upper image, the lowermost image shows a color Doppler image. And again, there's no vascularity within this hemorrhage. It's completely avascular. This is a three-day-old with isolated right adrenal hemorrhage with liquefaction causing that cystic appearance. So neonatal adrenal hemorrhage. Adrenal hemorrhage is actually more common in neonates than in children and adults. So it's actually the most common adrenal mass in infancy. So important to remember. Causes include various neonatal stresses and also difficulty with birth or hypoxia. So let's talk about different causes of adrenal hemorrhage. This is an adult patient who presented to the emergency department and there is this right ovoid mass within the adrenal gland. The left adrenal gland looks normal, denoted by the green arrow. And it's unclear on this image alone what the cause for this adrenal hemorrhage is. However, you can see that there is prevertebral hematoma and also the vertebral bodies look fragmented here on these images. Switching to bone windows and coning down a bit to the vertebral bodies, you can see that there are comminuted burst fractures of the T10 and T11 vertebral bodies. So this was a patient who sustained severe trauma. There was also a large pneumothorax and bilateral rib fractures together with pulmonary contusion. So the most common cause of adrenal hemorrhage in an adult patient is trauma. And it's usually unilateral. And can you guess which side is more common? Yes, right. Right is more common than left. 
And that's in part due to the fact that the right adrenal gland is sandwiched between the liver and the vertebral body. So when there's blunt trauma, it takes more of the brunt of that. This patient actually had spinal fixation and then a follow-up CT showing that that right adrenal hematoma had resolved. There are also, of course, non-traumatic causes. And when you have non-traumatic adrenal hemorrhage, it tends to be bilateral. Whereas in the setting of trauma, only about 20% are bilateral. And causes for non-traumatic adrenal hemorrhage include sepsis, surgery, burns, hypotension, and then also pregnancy. Various coagulation disorders also predispose to adrenal hemorrhage and thromboembolic disease, which can cause adrenal vein thrombosis. Adrenal tumors, particularly adrenal cortical carcinoma, can also cause hemorrhage. And of course, like everything else in medicine, there's idiopathic as a cause. And actually, the first case I showed you was idiopathic. It was never discovered what caused that patient's hematoma. All right, let's look at another case here. You can see that there are bilateral adrenal masses. And so right away, you're thinking, if this is adrenal hemorrhage, it's likely non-traumatic since it's bilateral. Coronal image also showing bilateral, mildly heterogeneously hyperdense adrenal masses, just superior to the kidneys. And this was a patient that had waterhouse Fridrikson syndrome. They had bilateral adrenal hemorrhage secondary to this meningococcal septicemia. So this is an infectious process that can lead to shock and massive hemorrhage into usually both the adrenal glands. It's also characterized by hypotension and can evolve into disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. So important not to miss this. All right, that's it for Leave Alone Adrenal Masses, focusing on adrenal hemorrhage. Thank you for your attention. Next time, I'll talk about adrenal cyst and myelolipoma. If you enjoyed this video lecture, I'd really appreciate it if you left a review and subscribed to Radiologist Headquarters on Apple Podcasts. Or please like and subscribe on YouTube so that others may find it. Please share this video lecture with a friend and visit radiologisthq.com for additional reference material. Thanks.